Throughout history, the human mind has been captivated by stories of monsters that lurk beneath the deep ocean blue, ensnaring any unlucky sailor now doomed to a watery grave. In today's world, we know that these stories were simply the exaggerations of witness accounts of extraordinary creatures within the animal kingdom. However, 485 million years ago, these tall stories would not be so much of an exaggeration, for this is the time period where the world's first apex predator appeared, and boy, does it live up to its image. Good day, everyone. The world's oceans are ever-changing and full of wonders and mysteries, giving birth to some of the most incredible creatures in the entire animal kingdom. But the animal in this video is one of special consideration, for it truly represents a time before mankind dominated the earth, and gives much credence to stories of sea monsters with an out-of-this-world appearance. So, let's go back in time 485 million years ago and meet this incredible creature that dominated the seas. Let's go meet Endoceros Gigantum. Here we are, 485 million years in the past, and at the beginning of the Ordovician Age. This period lasted for 42 million years, and life continued to evolve from the Cambrian Explosion event, which of course took place in the early Cambrian Age, about 541 to 530 million years ago, and is where most major animal groups, or phyla, first appeared in the fossil record. Now, life in the Ordovician was dominated by marine invertebrates, most popular being trilobites and eurypterids, or commonly referred sea scorpions. Now, whilst these creatures are truly impressive, they are dwarfed by the sheer awesomeness that is Endoceros gigantum. Endoceros gigantum could grow up to 6 metres thanks to its orthoconic shell, which makes the bulk of its length. Taking a look at this incredible creature, you could only imagine the stories that today's explorers would tell if they saw this truly alien animal lurking along the sea floor. Endoceros gigantum is of course a cephalopod and belongs to the extinct genus Endoceros and is tied to the nautiloid order Endocerida. Endocerids of the Ordovician age evolved from Elis Merocerida, an order of primitive cephalopods dated to the late Cambrian age. These early ancestors were tiny, with the largest members being just 15 centimeters. These little critters possessed various shell types characterized as breviconic, longiconic, orthoconic, and chirotonic, and is evident in all later descendants. Who would have thought that such little critters would evolve into the largest marine invertebrate of the entire Paleozoic era of 289 million years? Struth. Now, let's break down how this apex predator would have lived, and how it dominated the seas for millions of years. Alright, given that this awesome sea creature is extinct, we have to look at any modern day relatives and observe their behaviour to get a general idea of how Endoceros gigantum would have hunted and behaved. Now, in the oceans of today, the Endoceros genus is long extinct. However, the nautiloid group of cephalopods, which Endoceros belonged to, does have two members alive today, being the Nautilus and Allonautilus genera. Although they are nowhere near the top of the food chain, with the largest member, the chambered Nautilus, reaching a length of 10 inches, these modern-day relatives exhibit strong predatory and scavenger behaviour. They are known to feed on hermit crabs, shellfish, or scavenge carrion and detris. This indicates a preference of predatory behaviour of preying upon seafloor-dwelling organisms, with the Nautilus being able to reach depths up to 700 metres or 2,200 feet. 
their locomotion is also very unique. Instead of relying on a tail or several tentacles or fins, they rely on jet propulsion, expelling water from its mantle cavity through a siphon. A siphon is special for the Nautilus, as it allows full omnidirectional movement, although these iconic sea creatures seem to be stuck in first gear. Another point is the tentacles. Nautilus have grooves and ridges along their many tentacles, which are observed to move food into the mouth, where a strong beak breaks it apart. This is unlike the popular octopus and giant squid, which possess suckers on their tentacles. All right now, taking a look at Endoceros gigantum, we can see a very large vertical silhouette. This excessive surface area would impede mobility underwater and indicates that like modern nautiluses, Endoceros were slow moving creatures. This type of body formation strongly suggests a benthic feeding behavior and slower movements, which would encourage ambush hunting preferences. The evidence compiled for the Endoceros genus heavily suggests benthic feeding on seafloor organisms, which, during the Ordovician age, encompassed trilobites as the most dominant food source along the seafloor. Much like the chambered Nautilus, the much larger Endoceros gigantum would possess poor eyesight, more akin to a pine hole camera, and would instead locate prey through chemical detection thanks to a pair of rhinophores located near the eyes. Using this sense of smell, the Endoceros gigantum would ambush the trilobite, ensnaring it in its tentacles, bringing it towards the mouth where a strong beak would break into the trilobite shell, making a great cracking sound as the shell is broken apart. Now to address your next likely question, how did Endoceros go extinct? Especially as the genus seem to encompass the entire globe during their dominion of the world. Well, first off, the Ordovician age is known for drastic changes in plate tectonics and very high sea levels that covered entire continents, thanks to very high carbon dioxide levels that warmed the globe and melted the majority of the ice caps. However, the Ordovician age is also known for another reason, and that is the second largest mass extinction event in history. It dwarfs the asteroid that ended the dinosaur's reign, and ended 85% of all life in the Ordovician age. The key detail of this extinction event is the major fallen sea levels that drained the epicontinental seas, and looking at this map, the majority of the Ordoceros fossils have been found on land, having existed in an ancient sea bed, meaning that the very habitats that Endoceros inhabited eventually drained away. And as for Endoceros gigantum, well, with survival of the fittest, the bigger you are, the harder it is to adapt. And with such a rapid reduction in food and ecosystems, there was simply no way this species could have endured. And so, that ends the story of an epic sea creature. From apex predator to victim of survival of the fittest, there will never be another creature that truly embodied what could lurk below in the deep blue sea but we can still observe the Nautilus and Allo Nautilus genera in today's oceans. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode, as we explored the world's first apex predator. I want to give a big thank you to all of you who have watched till the end. Please like and subscribe, and I cannot wait for you to join the next adventure, as we continue to explore these awesome creatures that once ruled this world. So, stay tuned, Dave out.